Welcome back, everybody, to the KC Sports Report. I'm your host, Michael Darcy, and I'm once again joined by my friend Josh Fan of ShowMeFootball.com and ArrowheadAddict.com. And we jumped on this podcast tonight to talk about Rasheed Rice and the whole incident surrounding him over the past week. So, Josh, it's been a while since we've done a podcast, and it's been a while since we've you know heard anything new about Rasheed Rice. But the last thing that we heard was from his attorney, Royce West. He did claim that Rasheed Rice was involved in the incident involving mm-hmm. a six-car pileup on a Dallas highway last week. He did say that Rasheed Rice was involved and that he was driving the Lamborghini that was rented. Josh, what is your immediate thoughts on that, and how do you think that that might impact Rasheed Rice's future with the team? So a lot of people might think, oh, well, he did it. He screwed. His future with the Chiefs is no more. I look at it the opposite because I think it's a positive first step that he's taking responsibility and not trying to fight this and um, run and hide from the fact that he did it or try to you know dr- draw this out. He's just saying, hey, you know what? I screwed up. I was involved. And that's going to look better on him, especially when it comes to what the NFL decides to do with him, what the Kansas City Chiefs decide to do with him. If you guys remember Kareem Hunt in that situation, it wasn't so much what Kareem Hunt did. It was the fact that he lied to the organization, so it made them look like fools later on when the real story came out. Rasheed Rice didn't want this to – because we and really the downfall of Kareem Hunt was the fact that TNZ got their hands on that video. TNZ got on this one pretty quickly, so Rasheed Rice didn't even have the opportunity to say, ah, oh, well, it wasn't me. TMZ had that video and they were like, oh, no, look, this is you right here. <laughs> like, I don't know how they're able to get their hands on that stuff. It is a phenomenon that uh, remains um, unsolved. But, yeah, I think this is better for him in the long run that he's taking responsibility and it's going to look better on him. He, It was always going to be hard for him to look good from this because he fled the scene. That's what made it so much worse, in my opinion. You flee the scene. You leave a lot of unanswered questions. You leave people saying, what the heck did you do? What else was going on that made you run away? And I think one of those things was, well, uh, you mentioned it. The other thing that we did, Kingdom Crew, uh, there were drugs in the car. Maybe he was under the influence. I don't know. We'll we'll see what else comes out of that. But he fled the scene for some reason. And yeah, uh, in my opinion, that just makes it look worse. But who knows what the real reason was why he fled the scene. Maybe it was to avoid another charge of some sort. What I will say, I made a video about Rasheed Rice uh, a couple days ago, close to a week ago. And I made a lot of judgment calls that I shouldn't have made in hindsight. I said that he wasn't driving the car because that's what I believed to be true at the time. Just based on the dash cam footage and watching him get out of the car uh, on the opposite side of the driver's side, it kind of made me think, okay, it'd be pretty uh, hard for him to be driving the car and get out on the opposite passenger side and and to be driving Mm -hmm. the car. So for that reason, I said that he wasn't driving the car. But during that time, I did say that, you know, his Corvette was left on the scene in, in pretty bad shape. We came to find out that he rented the Lamborghini that was involved in the six car crash. And he was driving that Lambo which is not a good thing. And we found out just a couple days ago that there was 10.8 grams of marijuana found on you know, the scene, found in the car. And while that isn't good, and while it is a felony in Texas... Um, it, so I think not- that's wrong, actually. I don't think it's a felony. Yeah. Um, it's actually a misdemeanor. The amount was um, less than what would have made it a felony. But I know yes. that there was a false report about it, which is probably what you saw um i believed it at first though because i know texas is one of the few states that are still like very much against marijuana but um that would only be a misdemeanor i think i meant i meant to say a misdemeanor Uh, i I did see that fake report and then somebody explained it with like a screenshot of what texas deems you know a felony versus a misdemeanor and i think yes um it would be a misdemeanor and it's only like 60 days in jail tops or something along those lines he's more than likely going to get fined uh, if they are able to link that back to him. But yeah. as we said on the Kingdom Crew podcast, Josh, he got incredibly lucky that neither he nor anybody involved suffered any major injuries or died. And actually, at the time of this recording, we just found out that uh, somebody that was involved in the hit-and-run accident 
uh, a woman in Dallas just retained a lawyer because she received stitches in her eyelid and is on bed rest and is contemplating further legal action. Um, listen, she's going to get her bag for this incident and her involvement in the incident. And good for her. Uh, she's going to get all that she's you know owed. But I, I don't think that really changes anything in the eyes of the Chiefs or the NFL. I think Rasheed Rice is going to be a member of the Chiefs in 2024. I think a suspension by the NFL is definitely looming. And the fact that he did flee the scene is probably going to add some games to that suspension. Because, Josh, if you're innocent, why flee the scene? Especially when you have a rented Lamborghini in a Corvette. These are multiple, you know, six-figure cars you left on the scene unaccounted for. That is incredibly irresponsible. And, and I, for that reason, he should be punished. But Josh, I mean, what do you think the punishment's going to be like and how severe is that going to be? Uh, well, before I answer that question, I'll tack on one more thing to what you said, just the whole leaving the scene thing. I really don't think he thought that through because it's like, okay, if you're wanting to avoid a charge like uh, possession of marijuana, which obviously isn't even what happened because even though he fled the scene, he didn't take the evidence with him. So <laughs> he didn't even flee the scene correctly. But um, it was criminal. Yeah, but look... That stuff seems so minuscule when we're talking about people who were injured. Um, one of the uh, people in one of the other vehicles involved in the accident was a four-year-old child who is now traumatized from the accident. He just would have looked so much better had he stuck around, made sure everyone was okay, took responsibility, was there to swap insurance details, all that good stuff. But that's not what he did. And because of that, that goes into answering your question. I think the NFL is going to be a little bit harsher in their potential suspension of Rasheed Rice because of the fact that he left the scene. Um, yeah. When you bring bad publicity to the shield, to that to the NFL, they tend to come down a little bit worse on you. And uh, I just think that if he had, with the accident alone, I feel like there's probably a four game suspension. We could be looking at six games though with the fleeing the scene thing added added in because I just think that that is very significant. That's a significant detail, um, a part of this whole thing. So that's kind of what I think is going to happen. Now, when he'll actually serve the suspension too, is also going to be something to look at because the NFL, the way that they ha they've handed out these suspensions over the past few years has been kind of strange. Like, uh, with Willie Gay, um, a couple years ago, I think it was, he played like the first couple games and then the NFL was like, all right, now you're going to serve your suspension. Now you're going to yeah. miss the next four games. I hope that the NFL is able to, come to a resolution fairly quickly so we can see what happens and the chiefs can plan accordingly, because I feel like a decision like that could affect also what the chiefs do, you know, signing another veteran receiver, potentially, if they think they're going to be without rice for the first six games, that could be something where they're looking at signing like a Tyler Boyd, who's still out there. And they might still be looking at that. And if I were them, I would still look at that just because I think Tyler Boyd is a solid player who could replicate what Rasheed rice brings you. Um, Cause I think, I'd be surprised if he didn't miss any time at all. I feel like he's definitely going to miss some time. Just the question is, is when that time is going to be and how long is it going to be for? I would be shocked if he didn't miss any time. And at that point, the NFL almost dropped the ball because listen, while he didn't necessarily injure anybody or well, I know he did injure somebody, but he didn't kill anybody. It's not a Henry Ruggs situation, not, not a serious injury, close. but at the end of the day, this is what we deem conduct that is detrimental to the nfl and their yes. policies and that is a reason alone why he could get suspended but josh you make an interesting point that the decision on how long to suspend rice might impact what the chiefs do in free agency but in my opinion this incident as a whole maybe change what the chiefs do in the draft i, I was pretty confident that they would take a wide receiver early in the draft i think this you know decision that rice made almost but guarantees them to take a wide receiver in round one and maybe they double down and take a yeah. wide receiver in the second round if they don't know what Rice's you know next season looks like if he's suspended for six games or four games or worst case scenario eight games who knows but that definitely changes the Chiefs perspective on the draft and who they might take and Josh what do you think about that? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think before this, you could have been like, all right, maybe if there's a tackle there that the Chiefs yeah. like, or hey, maybe you know this edge prospect fell to us and we just can't say no. I feel like that stuff's kind of got to go now. That's that's off the table because 
you need a wide receiver. This can't be Hollywood Brown and friends for like the first half of the season. It's not going to work. And also I think the chiefs need to prepare long-term to what happens at wide receiver, which is also going to reinforce that idea that they should draft a round one wide receiver because is the, I mean, it sucks to have to say this, but is this the last time Rasheed Rice gets in trouble? We heard about those character concerns prior to him coming to the chiefs and that draft class and how people didn't like the friends that he surrounded himself with at SMU. Is this going to be a problem that continues on because Rasheed Rice has money now and he can buy these expensive cars. I, I wouldn't bet that he would do that again after what just happened, but um, the Chiefs are going to have to take precautions to make sure that Rasheed Rice isn't doing more stupid stuff off the field. And I mentioned this um, in the Kingdom Crew that we just did prior as well. But this could be something where when it comes time for a contract extension for Rasheed Rice, the Chiefs say, hey, we wanted to give you this contract, but unfortunately because of your off-field stuff, um, this is more so what we're thinking. And Rasheed Rice is going to not only lose money in the short term because of the legal fees and um, paying off the Lamborghini that he wrecked and all that stuff, He's also going to lose money in the long term, in my opinion, because the Chiefs are going to be hesitant to hand out a bunch of money to a guy who's got off-field stuff going on, just like how they were able to get a discount on Tyreek Hill's contract a few years ago uh, whenever he had all of his off-field stuff going on. Yeah, and like you said, Rasheed Rice doesn't have the money to, you know, do this, you know, do this and expect to be okay. Like, he's still on a rookie contract. He was a second-round draft pick. His signing bonus wasn't that much. So at the end of the day, Rasheed Rice is going to really take a hit financially because of this decision. And hopefully that's enough for him to realize how much of a mistake he made. Uh, it, it shouldn't have to be a financial reason to realize the mistake you made. Uh, it should be the injuries and the lives that you almost, well, you definitely impacted, but you almost caused to end with your careless decision making. But Josh, I think that's kind of my you know, ultimate takeaway is that Rasheed Rice got a second chance, uh, not only at football, at life. I mean, he could yeah. have really hurt himself in that car. He could have ended the life of somebody else, and it would have ended his life because he would have gone to he would have gone to jail. He would have gotten probably put away for a long time. And this could have been a Henry Rugg situation for the Chiefs. And and I don't want to say that this is why he fled the scene because we don't know. We don't have any evidence. And I learned from my lesson from last time with reporting on things that you don't know the answer to. <laughs> but when you found uh, a, a drug in the car and the people who crashed the two cars left the scene with the evidence in the car, you got to think or you can at least assume it is not a, a bad assumption to think that there might be drugs involved. And that just adds charges to what already exist and would add games to the suspension maybe. So I, I definitely think that Hen or Henry Ruggs, I definitely think that Rasheed Rice avoided a bullet and he needs to learn his lesson or this could be something that, you know, continues to plague not only his time in Kansas City, but this young dude's life. And so hopefully he can, you know, really learn and, and capitalize on this second chance and, and become a better dude from it. But Josh, you have anything else you want to add? Yeah, it's just mind-boggling how this continues to happen with NFL players, especially after the Henry Ruggs thing. It's like, how do you yeah. not see that and think, yeah, I'm not going to drive at high speeds on the highway, not knowing what's going on because it's just, it's not safe, it, it, it's dangerous. And then even earlier today, there was the story with Devondre Sweat, the Texas defensive tackle, who's a projected top 100 pick in this next draft, had a DWI, was arrested last night. And it's like, what's it going to going to take for these guys to learn and not do this stupid stuff how many examples do you need how many examples do you need even from the chiefs organization with uh brit reed and you know all the trouble that players have caused in this organization you know that the chiefs were not happy clark hunt brett Veach, they were not happy to be working on easter and waking up to that news they are probably they should be eviscerating rasheed rice and andy reed better make sure that rasheed rice runs some extra laps at next training camp because he's lucky to even be here and who knows if the situation that happened with Britt Reed made the Chiefs' tolerance policy for issues like this significantly less. I mean, who knows if there's you know more to it? I think that it would be a, a rash decision to cut him when there haven't been any substantial injuries, and you mm -hmm. can kind of you know quantify it as a mistake that a young dude made. The way that but I you know, see it, uh, the way that I see it, I'll just cut you off real quick. 
the law does not punish Rashi Rice for what could have happened. Yes, what could have happened was very bad, but the law doesn't punish you for what could have happened. So in my opinion, the Chiefs also should not punish him for what could have happened. I think that's only fair that they, you know, let the information come to them and react accordingly. I couldn't agree more. Josh, anything else you want to add? No, I think that's it. Uh, I think that pretty much summarizes our feelings. And luckily the situation wasn't worse than it could have been uh, or that, or than it was. So uh, prayers to everyone involved, including Rasheed Rice, because you have to also feel bad for Rasheed Rice. Cause it's not like he wanted this to happen and he is young and he made a really stupid mistake, but the hope is moving forward that uh, he learns a lesson from this. I couldn't agree more. And like you said, Rasheed Rice got very fortunate that nobody lost their life and he can use this horrible situation where he made a lot of mistakes to turn his life around and really become a better person. And, and for that reason, you know, hopefully we see some, some big improvements from Rasheed Rice both on and off the field in 2024. So Josh, with that being said, that's all we have for this video. Where can the people find you? You can find me here on YouTube, Show Me Football. Uh, also, make sure you guys check out our Kingdom Crew podcast. We just filmed a newer episode earlier today. Uh, absolutely jam-packed with Chiefs news and information. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Show Me FB for Show Me Football. Make sure to check out my work on ShowMeFootball.com and ArrowheadAddict.com. All of that stuff will be linked in the description of this video, guys. If you haven't already done it, subscribe to this channel and like this video. You can find me on social media at the Michael Darcy on Twitter and Instagram. And with that being said, guys, thank you for watching this video and go Chiefs.